In this section, we're going to use the theory of linear elasticity in order to get an approximation of the value of pore volume compressibility for a rock. This is a parameter which is particularly important for reservoir simulation. As you can see here in equation 335, uh, we have the equation of pore pressure diffusion in which pore pressure PP is a function of time and it's also a function of space. In this case, I have simplified this equation just for one dimension. And we see that these uh, two uh, derivatives also depend on what is known as the diffusivity coefficient, which depends on the rock permeability, on the fluid viscosity, and on the total compressibility of the system. The total compressibility is comp composed by the fluid compressibility, depending on the saturations also of the fluids, but also on the pore volume compressibility. And this is a property of the rock itself, not of the fluids. Compressibility it is, is very important because it is important in order, for example, to quantify what is compaction drive in a, a reservoir. The higher the compaction drive, the more we can squeeze out of the rock just by decreasing the pore space. And this pore volume compressibility, it is defined as the variation of the pore volume divided the original pore volume due to a variation of pore pressure. Us usually, if we are in conditions of uh, reservoir depletion, and this is what is most used this compressibility uh, factor for, and if we have a reservoir which is long enough uh, and if the cap rock is uh, soft enough, we are going to see that we can assume that the vertical stress is going to stay constant on a given reservoir and the horizontal strain is going to be zero. So these two parameters will be constant. And a graphical representation of this is uh, this reservoir, where we have our reservoir in this uh, layer, in which we have a wellbore and a horizontal wellbore, on top we have a cap rock and when we apply a depletion and a change of pressure in this reservoir we are going to assume that our vertical stress stays constant and that makes sense because why would the weight of everything on top change because I'm changing the pressure uh, the fluid pressure in the reservoir so the vertical stress is going to stay constant and also our assumption of constant horizontal strain or horizontal strain equal to zero is that this reservoir is long enough uh, such that uh, there is no space for uh, shrinkage or expansion in the horizontal direction. There is just compaction in the vertical direction. So how much this rock compresses is what we're trying to quantify with this compressibility parameter. And also we could take a look a little bit further into what will be the rock in this condition. And here we have an image courtesy mm -hmm. of uh, CoreLab in which we can see this uniaxial pore volume compressibility in which we measure what is the change of porosity as pore pressure decreases with time because that's going to impact uh, the compaction drive, as we said before, but also sometimes it impacts permeability. And it could decrease significantly permeability, as in this case, almost uh, almost to half of the original value. All right, so let's see now how we're going to apply the theory in order to calculate this uniaxial pore volume compressibility. So we go from the small scale to the reservoir, back to the equations. All right. This was the definition of the pore volume compressibility. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to simplify this equation by assuming that whenever I apply a change in pore volume, that's going to go or transfer directly into a change of a bulk volume, which means that when I lose porosity, 
the same amount of volume goes into changing the bulk volume of the rock. And you may think that as, as obvious, that if porosity decreases, the volume of the rock is going to decrease too. But at these very high stresses sometimes, also when I apply more stress on a solid, the grains themselves, they might also change volume. So by assuming that the change of pore volume is equal to the change of bulk volume, I'm assuming that the mineral skeleton is not changing volume. And that's a fair assumption for uh, relatively uh, soft rocks and uh, changes of pressure which are not too high. But sometimes it, it is not. Here we'll just assume that th this is the case, so I'm replacing the change of pore volume, Vp, by the change of bulk volume, uh, Vp. And I'm, I am also in this equation dividing by, by the bulk volume and also multiplying by the bulk volume, which this one, if it goes on the top, it will be a multiplication. And this is going to help me simplify my equations because the definition now that I have in between parentheses applies to the compressibility of the bulk rock or bulk compressibility, CVP. And the ratio of pore volume to bulk volume is just the porosity of the rock. So I can relate the pore volume compressibility to the bulk compressibility of the rock through the porosity. And what is the bulk compressibility of the rock? Well, the bulk compressibility of the rock is something that we have already seen. And for the case of the one-dimensional strain condition or uniaxial strain condition, this is equal to the inverse of the constraint modulus, where the constraint modulus depends on the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio. We derived this equation in previous sections where we calculated horizontal stress for the uniaxial strain condition. It's the same equation, and this stiffness characterizes or quantifies the stiffness of a rock when you have strain just in one direction. And the inverse is the compressibility. So if we have the bulk compressibility of the rock and we have the porosity, we can estimate what is the pore volume compressibility, some other times uh, known also in practice as PVC, pore volume compressibility, and here we have a U because this is the uniaxial pore volume compressibility, and is going to be equal to the equation that we have over here, 339, which is a function of the Poisson ratio, the Young modulus, and porosity. Typical values of the pore volume compressibility range from uh, 2 to 30 times 10 to the minus 6 PSI inverse and this PSI inverse times 10 to the minus 6 usually goes by the name of a micro SIP. A SIP is the inverse of a PSI. Rocks with a low compressibility usually are in the order of uh, two micro SIPs, and rocks with a high compressibility are in the order of 30 micro SIP. Again, this range is, uh, is, uh, is quite broad. So it, it depends a lot on which kind of rock uh, you are dealing with. That's why many times this is a value that it's uh, strongly advised to be measured. And particularly it's advised to be measured whenever you incur into very high changes of pore pressure that might lead into plastic deformation or irrecoverable deformation. Uh, in this theory, we're assuming that the rock is elastic, but we're going to see later on that Sometimes uh, this is not the case. Just to uh, close this topic, I have uh, two more things to, to show. Uh, one is to show the variability of the compressibility or the stiffness of rocks and show that that changes quite a bit and uh, it varies over 
almost uh, three orders of magnitude. And here we're not looking at compressibility. With compressibility, remember that you also have to add porosity, but we're looking at the Yam modulus, and we can see that there are some rocks can can be quite stiff, very uh, poorly compressible, like uh, igneous rocks, uh, very cemented sandstones, uh, very stiff uh, carbonates. But there are some other rocks which also comprise reservoir rocks and uh, cap rocks that are can be a lot more compressible, like going into unconsolidated sands or uh, mud rocks without uh, significant cementation or carbonates even that they haven't undergone a much of porosity reduction and they can be quite porous and uh, quite soft and the compressibility is going to depend on the stiffness and compressibility of the rock itself and second uh, example 3.5 uh, shows uh, here the procedure about how to calculate the pore volume compressibility, in this case the uniaxial pore volume compressibility, when the porosity and the elastic properties are known. Just one more thing uh, to close this topic uh, is that uh, the, traditionally this pore volume compressibility has been measured for what are called isotropic conditions or loading from all sides where the loading from all sides is the same and you compress the rocks from all sides and in all directions traditionally this kind of measurement was done because this was an experiment which was very easy to do in the laboratory uh, however recent uh, measurements and data show that this is not a correct compressibility to use in uh, reservoir simulation and particularly uh, when you have a long and thin reservoirs that follow a stress path that go a lot more closely along the uniaxial strain condition so instead of that the correct pore volume compressibility that should be used in this type of reservoir simulations that did not involve rigorously geomechanics is the uniaxial pore volume compressibility which is a value that has been measured uh, recently, I would say in the last uh, probably 15 years, it's a relatively new parameter that is measured in the laboratory.